Howdy and welcome back to the workshop. In today's episode, we're going to be building a jewelry bench, which is a place where I can put another bench vise, have a bench pin, put my microscope. We're going to be restoring a vise. We're going to be talking about some old junk and we're going to be saying thank you for allowing me to hit 200,000 subscribers. What an awesome journey to get here. I'm thrilled to be here. And when we hit 250K, we're gonna be giving away a Damascus chef's knife. Before we jump into the construction of said jewelry bench, let's give a quick thanks to today's sponsor, which is Skillshare. Thank you, Skillshare. With that, let's jump on in. First things first, before we do anything, I wanna talk about the construction of the bench. I've got some inch and a half square tubing that we're gonna build the frame from, and then I've got some two inch thick butcher block shuffleboard top of reclaimed barn wood from my friend Josh at Explore Games here in Bozeman. And so the plan is to build a rectangular support for the top of it, four legs coming down, and then a C-shaped support on the bottom so that I can get things underneath the bench and then some casters underneath that, because that's how we roll. So the top itself is about eight feet long, and so we're gonna have three eight foot long pieces. I had those cut when I bought this steel many months ago, because I thought I was gonna do this sooner. Part of having a jewelry bench is having that nice half moon shape cut out in it. So rather than having the ability to do a regular rectangle for the top where these would both be, wow, that's imprecise, eight feet, we need to have a cutout in the middle of our bench there, a half round cutout. Uh, maybe we'll make it 24 inches, like that. All right, so now what we need is two eight foot pieces, two three foot pieces, six 14 inch pieces, uh, and then four 34 inch pieces. We'll, we'll, we'll just cut it, we'll just cut it, we'll go, we got it. Well, after thinking about it for 0 0.2 seconds, I realized I really don't need the front facing bar there at all. That, that two inch thick shuffleboard top is gonna be plenty thick to keep this thing rigid. So I'm just gonna do the C frame of it, which means we need two eight inch pieces, four 14 inch pieces, and our legs. Also, I'm gonna cut pieces of angle iron and uh, drill holes in them, and those are gonna be the tabs that we're gonna use to screw our top onto our base. <laughs> my strong hand tools, rattle cart with some fireball tool squares to get the frame stuck together. This makes the process quick and easy to get a precise end result. I cut up some one inch angle iron and drilled holes for the mounting method of the tabletop to the frame. All right, next step here is gonna be welding on our swiveling casters. Now that we've got both of our initial frames stuck together with our legs at the right height and all of that good stuff. I'm a little bit worried that they're not gonna be perfectly dead even, so I'm gonna weld on one first, then I'm gonna flip it and see if I need to do any shimming before I do the, the second weld there. Just to make sure that we don't have a wobbly table because that would suck. Casters are such a wonderful thing. Oh, well, that's not good. It's definitely a little tipsy, but it's not nearly as bad. Okay, that's pretty good. We need to finish welding, and then we'll, and then we'll screw on our screws into the, this. Need to figure out where this is gonna go. Real quick though, the reason why I had to take a second to figure out where this was gonna go is because it is a through base. Um, and so you drill a hole, oh, well, it's kinda close. Uh, you drill a hole through the tabletop or workbench that you're mounting it on, and then you tighten this down, and when you loosen it, you're able to pick up the vise and pivot it on the swivel base, and then you can tighten it back down and it won't move. Uh, and this is one of the vices I'm going to be mounting on this bench. Um, it's pretty dang high, but that's going to be nice for doing detailed work. 
Uh, I'm pretty stoked about this. It's probably pre-1900s, uh, and it looks, it looks cool. Um, so, yeah, made in Erie, Pennsylvania. It's an Erie 1C bench vise. First coffee spill on the new workbench. Historic moment to be sure. I'm gonna start off a little bit of degreasing with some acetone on this bad mama jamma. This thing looks great. Uh, it's this vice here is pretty dang high. It's like above nipple height, which is very high. But when you're doing a lot of like really precise filing, having it that close to where you don't have to like stoop over to file is going to be really nice. And I have other vices at other heights for different things. I'm really stoked with how this thing came out. I think I may end up anchoring it to the wall at some point as well uh, with an attachment method that I can kind of. Uh, take it off and move it around if I want to, uh, and then put it back when I need to. Um, I'm sure I'll end up doing all sorts of other things to it also, but not, not right now. For now, I'm happy to have another, another workspace that I can fill up and clutter with things and not be able to use. It's going to be great. Boy, I tell you what, I'm a God-fearing man, but I ain't afraid to whoop you if you go ahead and keep on beating, jumping up on me. <laughs> you best watch out now, huh? All right, the next couple steps on the jewelry bench are this. We're gonna go ahead and cut out that half circle shape because that kind of allows you to get deeper into the bench and it also allows you to throw a piece of cloth underneath there to catch things like gold filings, other precious metal filings. And we're gonna do that with a jigsaw. I bought a couple new blades uh, and I borrowed my father's jigsaw to be able to that thing out. Let's go ahead and get it drawn on there. I think I'm gonna do a 18 inch in diameter, so nine inch radius, half round. You know what I'm saying, you can get it. One of the other things that I forgot to do, which I probably should have done before I even started cutting or even doing anything else in the shop, is mixing up some black epoxy. I'm gonna use this Total Bolt Thick Set. Yes, the Total Bolt Thick Set stuff. Uh, you mix it at a three to one ratio, uh, and it takes a little while to set up, but I want this stuff to be kind of gooey by the time I'm ready to apply it so that it doesn't just drain through. It starts off pretty liquidy, uh, but if I let it get gooey, then I'll be able to throw it into these nail holes and sand it down later on. It'll be a nice way to fill up all of these holes um, and just do kind of the surface level just a little bit and not have to fill the entire length of them and use eight times the amount of epoxy.
Well, I don't mean to brag or anything, but I did say at the beginning that I didn't think this was gonna work. I don't know if, if I think my mic had maybe died at that point. Um, but this blade got up to approximately really, really hot. This thing may have been red hot. Not that I'm an expert by any stretch of the imagination, but I don't think jigsaws are supposed to be producing so much friction that they turn the blade 1400 degrees. Uh, so change of plans. I'm gonna maybe try this Sawzall. That's what I'm gonna try it with. Here we go. Big time sawing action. There's like a nail or something in there. Ah, there is indeed a nail. Well, while that epoxy is curing, I can run through really quick some of my antique finds recently. Uh, I love antiquing, and I don't usually just buy like random junk. I don't buy dishware or anything like that. There's some very specific things that I look for. Uh, I look for old vices, I look for books, and I look for useful tools that I'll be able to use here in the workshop. Uh, that little bench vise that I restored, I found at an antique shop um, a couple weeks ago. One of the things that's caught my interest recently is books about mechanical or technical drawing. And I've actually found some really sweet finds uh, in kind of those, that area recently. These three in particular are the ones that I'm talking about. This is the first one that I found. It's a 1918 copy of a manual on how to do engineering drawing uh, for students and draftsmen. And there's just some really cool stuff in here, things that I hadn't even considered uh, about the kind of art of drafting. And this is the first like look that I got into it. Um, and funnily enough, I think this is my least favorite of all of the books that I've found. The second one that I found is this, Hawkins Self-Help for Home Study, The Mechanical Drawing. Uh, and it is a 1902 print. And there is just some awesome stuff in here as well. Uh, this one's coming apart a little bit, but you know, it's 119 years old, so what do you expect? Two of the quotes that I really appreciate out of this book that are just in the very beginning, uh, kind of in the preface area. One says, no matter how thorough our education may have been at the first, rules and formulas will slip from the memory and every day's experience gives additional evidence of the truth of the age old adage that the key that rests, rusts. I think that's awesome. And my other one that I really like out of here is, the peculiarity of all art is that it cannot be communicated in writing alone. Craft is a term which is synonymous with art. A craft requires manual dexterity which cannot be taught in books, which is a funny thing to read in a book. Uh, and then the book that I found yesterday is I think the coolest one of them all. It is an 1888 printing of a 18, 82 original copyright um, of the same thing, a uh, mechanical drawing self-taught. Uh, and so it's teaching you how to do mechanical drawings. And so this is the book that I'm going to try to pull the majority of my information from. I believe it's the most thorough. Uh, it has all sorts of cool stuff. Uh, it has a lot of math in it, which I'm not super stoked on, but I suppose um, it's the, the fun kind of math. Uh, it has references on how to do technical drawings for a blacksmith, uh, for us simple-minded folks. Um, it legitimately is like, don't let them do the guesswork. 
you, they, you need to tell them exactly what to do, um, which I think is hilarious. People always say uh, that blacksmithing is a lost art. The amount of times that I tell people that I'm a blacksmith, they're like, oh, that's cool, that's a lost art. When in reality, you can't swing a dead cat without hitting a blacksmith in America for the most part. However, I think that this is awfully cool because I actually think that it really is a lost art and people legitimately don't do hand mechanical drawings for the most part anymore. I can't think of anyone that I know of. I'm fairly immersed in that world that does that sort of drawing. So I think that that's super, super sweet. I'm very excited to kind of dive into this world and have the ability to do a beautiful drawing uh, that is both functional and can be read and reproduced and printed uh, so that you guys can have cool drawings. I can have cool drawings for my walls. So I'm excited to learn how to do all of this and you guys will definitely get to follow along with that because I'm definitely going to film it. Back to the bench, it's time to clean up the filler epoxy, touch it up, and then get it completely finished. All right, now that we've got that uh, beautiful butcher block all covered up, it's time to coat it. Uh, I think the best way uh, is gonna be covering it in this nice white paint. I think I'm just gonna use paste wax for it, uh, just to keep it fresh. Simple, easy, smells nice. I like the prints. It's just some good, not nice color. Smells good. It's all good. Son of a biscuit! Um, wax isn't very economical to use on this sort of thing. There we go. Now with the bench wrapped up, we've got a couple of announcements to make. Numero uno, I didn't forget about the power hammer. It's still there, but the only difference now is that I have just about everything that I need to get this thing wrapped up. So uh, in the next couple weeks, this thing will be running and hitting steel, unless something terrible happens, in which case that will not be happening. Hopefully nothing terrible happens and we're able to get this thing up and running. The only thing that I need to order is the six inch, five ply, super grip flat belting to go around it. And then the pulley, and then the drive pulley for my motor. And other than that, I have everything that I need. I've got the wood for the base. I've got both the pulleys that I need. I've got the shafting. I've got the steel for the tower. This thing's gonna be ready to rock and roll in no time. I am so thrilled with this 10 month long journey. Announcement number two uh, is a, on a little bit more of a serious note, and it's that um, actually, guys, as of today, Skillshare is sponsoring today's episode, and they are an online learning community with thousands of video tutorials on all sorts of different stuff, from photography to videography to iPhone photography, if you aren't good at using a regular camera like me. Creative writing, so many things. It's a little bit overwhelming, actually, how many different things there are on. Uh, for each episode that they sponsor, I get to kind of focus on one different platform. And I took my sweet time trying to figure out what to talk about today's episode. Uh, at first I was going to do lettering and then drawing and then I finally settled on photography and then from there I just settled on iPhone photography. So the video that I decided to talk about today is iPhone photography, how to take pro photos on your iPhone by Dale McManus. Now this is great because I can film okay with this whole setup that you guys are, that Isaiah is holding right now. But the simple fact of the matter is that I usually don't take the time to bust out the Lumix S5 for taking a simple photo. 
Uh, most of the time I have my iPhone with me and that's what I take most of my Instagram photos with. So I figured why not get better at that rather than trying to learn this whole shebang, maybe later on. So if you guys are interested in continually learning, I'd very much strongly recommend that you check out Skillshare. It's an awesome platform uh, with great content. Every single course that I've watched is really well done. There's no ads and it's really easy to find the things that you're looking to learn so long as you know what you're looking to learn because otherwise, like I said, there's a lot on there and you can learn just about anything and really get lost doing it. I'm not lying. For the first thousand of you that click the link in the description down below, you will get a one month free trial, which is awesome. That's a lot of content and you'll probably get hooked like I did. So go ahead, check out Skillshare. Skillshare, thank you very much for sponsoring today's episode and I will see you guys on the next one. Okay.